is the consent agenda. All items under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests. First item is item A, approve agenda as submitted. Item B, receive and place on file all notices pertaining to this meeting. Item C, receive and place on file all materials having any bearing on this meeting. Item D, approval of minutes of special meeting on August 31st, 2015, as on file in the City Clerk's Office. Item E, approval of Treasurer's Report of Claims. E1, approval of Keep Beatrice Beautiful Claim in the amount of $6,371. Item E2, approval of the balance of the Treasurer's Report of Claims in the amount of $333,263.76. Item F, approval of the Boswell Report of Claims in the amount of $39,660.95. Item G, resolution number 5807, granting permission to the Gage County Tourism and their designees to sell or offer for sale or peddle goods, wares, or merchandise in Charles Park for the 2015 Trail of Treasures between the dates of October 2nd, 2015 and October 4th, 2015. Item H, resolution number 5808, granting permission to Julie Fisher, doing business as Julie's Hot Dogs, to sell goods upon city property. Item I, approval of manager application for Stan T. Meyer, license number I-112091, in connection with Sam and Louie's New York Pizza, and item J, resolution number 5813, granting permission <coughs> to the Beatrice Area Chamber of Commerce and their designees to sell or offer for sale art pieces upon city property located in the Carnegie Building, located at 218 North 5th Street. Are there any items that a council member would like removed from the agenda? Rich? E E1. Okay, anybody else? I'll abstain from E1. And you'll abstain from E1, okay. Anything else? Anyone from the public? Mr. Catlin? Mayor, I move that all the items listed on the consent agenda, with the exception of item E1, be approved, accepted, and ratified as presented. Second. Been moved by Catlin, seconded by Kerr, I beg your pardon, by Morgan that the items under the consent agenda be approved with the exception of item E1. Your vote, please. That is approved 8-0. Okay, Rich, you're on board. Um, I just pulled that off because oh. I didn't find it in the... I'm sorry, just, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, I'm Rich. sorry, yeah. Mayor, I move that uh, item E1, the approval of Keep Beatrice Beautiful Claim in the amount of $6,371 be approved, accepted, and rat or ratified as presented. Second. Then moved by Catlin, seconded by Kerr, that uh, uh, the approval of uh, Beatrice, uh, keep Beatrice beautiful claim in the amount of 6371 be approved. Discussion. The only reason I pulled this off, Mr. Mayor, was I didn't find it in the packet. I just wanted to know what it was for. Linda. Is this for their uh, Beatrice Plus funds? Yeah, for them to get the Beatrice Plus funds to pay for the new drivers they have in mind. So, not a problem then. I just. Yep. Yeah, okay. It's on, on your uh, page eight of your invoices or your. Payments. Okay. There's one listed there in the middle of the capital improvement <coughs> funds. Uh, Keep Beatrice Beautiful purchase of 10 window drapes for the city auditorium for $6,371. I just missed it. Nope. All right. Any other questions, concerns? Your vote, please. And that is approved uh, seven uh, in favor, and Dwight Party abstains. Okay. 
Next item on the agenda is a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2016 and 2017 biannual budget. This is our public hearing that we're required by state law to have <coughs> before we pass the annual budget. We've talked about the last couple of uh, meetings. If there's any additional questions, happy to field those. We've had a couple of meetings. We've talked about it. We've made changes, modifications. Is there anything else that uh, you've noticed in between time that needs to be addressed? Anyone from the public? Mr. Catlin, I move we close the public hearing. Mayor, I move that the public hearing be closed at 7.08 p.m. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Cook. Phil Cook that the public hearing be closed at 7.08 p.m. Uh, your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Next, I'd like to introduce an ordinance to adopt the biennial appropriations bill for fiscal years 2016 and 17 in the amount of $44,454,032 for fiscal year 2016 and $41,433,929 for fiscal year 2017. Mayor, I move that said ordinance be given number 15-013. The title, therefore, be approved. The rules be suspended. And said ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. Second. It's been moved by Catlin, seconded by Billsbach. Uh, that the ordinance number 15-013 uh, and the title there of, of approved rules be suspended and the ordinance be read by title only three times tonight. Your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Ordinance number 15-0113 by number the first time. Ordinance number 15-013 by number the th uh, second time. And ordinance number 15-013 by number the third time tonight. Mayor, I move that ordinance number 15-013 be passed and approved. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Claybaugh, that 15-013 be passed and approved. Any further discussion? From the audience. Gentlemen, your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Thank you very much, everyone. Also want to thank the department heads and certainly the administrative staff, Tobias and Linda, uh, for all your hard work in putting this together. Uh, it's certainly appreciated. All right, next item on the agenda is a hearing to set the fiscal year 2016 final property tax request. Mayor, I moved to increase the total restricted funds authority for the fiscal year beginning on October 1st, 2015 and ending on September 30th, 2016 by an additional 1% as authorized in section 13-519 of the Nebraska revised statutes. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by party to increase the total restricted funds authority for fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2015, ending September 30th, 2016, by an additional 1% as authorized in section 13-519 of the Nebraska revised statutes. Linda does such a good job explaining the restricted funds. We're gonna let her come up once again and explain what this is and why we're doing it. Okay. The lid for municipalities in the state statutes is calculated on restricted funds that you can um, request from the taxpayers, such as personal property taxes, um, then taxes that we received through state authorities, such as motor vehicle um, taxes and highway allocation funds and municipal equalization funds. And then there's a quarterly motor vehicle fee fund that we get from the state. And then also our local option sales tax. So just about any fund or revenue source that we would get that deals with taxes is called a restricted fund. And you can only increase that every year by 2.5%. Um, what you're voting on right now 
they allow you to also increase it an additional 1% or 3.5%. Now when you compute that, basically what you're saying is here's our restricted funds that we can have and we want to increase it 3.5%. That doesn't mean you're going to use it, but if, and then a little bit later you're going to pass a resolution to set aside what you aren't going to use. And that's $695,445 this year. So this just gives you the authority to build your base up a little bit higher. You know, the legislature enacted that. They said every year you can have two and a half, and we have to have a supermajority vote on this to get an additional <coughs> 1%. And all you're going to do then is just build that base up in case some year you need to come back and ask for it. You know, in some years something happens that you need to increase you know, property taxes or not even just to increase property taxes, but maybe you get a bunch of sales tax coming in. You know, maybe the economy grows and sales tax comes in and you want to be able to use that for something. So by building that base and keeping that up there, then you, um, you won't lose that increase that the legislators have allowed you to do. Does that make sense? Questions? Yeah. Uh, no, it does make sense. I'm, yeah after saying through this, but I always ask the same question and Tobias, you know, and every time we have a budget, I ask this because I ask you to explain it to the public because we sit here and we are supposed to be able to understand this. And the questions that I feel the most of is I like trying to explain to people what, where their property tax goes and where these funds go and what that's, what we spend that on aside from what their fees and revenue or, or revenue base comes from. I tried to explain, you know, I tried to explain to people that the money generated from the electrical department, the water department, those kind of things, isn't part of this. These are two separate things. So, if you could kind of give the public the Reader's Digest version of where this money goes and what it funds within the city, and what it doesn't fund within the city. Sure. Uh, I mean, and you knew I was going to ask you that, so I hope you were prepared. So. Oh. We'll, we'll take our shot out of here. Uh, the restricted funds, uh, those are tax dollars. Those are general revenue dollars. Those are going to be used for um, expenditures such as police, fire, public properties, uh, library, those type of services uh, that the city offers. Those are the type of services that are funded with general fund revenues, which come from property taxes. Uh, part of your sales tax goes there. Uh, that's the two biggest inputs to that to that. Uh, revenue source. Right. So when we're here and we're discussing things for the public's information, that is what we refer to as city services. Correct. The other side is services provided by the Board of Public Works. Right. And that would be your electric, wastewater, and water. Those all have their own rates that they charge for the uh, services that they provide. And you'll have later on tonight a couple of those rate ordinances uh, come up for you. But yes, Whatever the water department needs for revenue <coughs> is generated from the fees charged for the water department. We, we don't commingle those funds. The street department has their own funds that they get from the uh, Department of uh, Roads, uh, State of Nebraska. There's some sales tax money in there, but they have their own revenue sources as well that go into the street department. All right. And, and those funds are in the restricted funds. So you need to include, when you're talking to people about, when you hear about these restricted funds and it's $7.5 million and you, the authority to, to increase that and build that base up, that is for streets, and like you said, and all your capital improvements in the parks, any or buildings, any of our public buildings or that kind of thing, or any debt levy we might have, which we don't have much right now. So that's what yeah, that I, It's supports. just that I explain, I, tr I make a very humble attempt to explain this probably 10 or 15 times a year to different people and I don't do it nearly as eloquently as you guys do so um, I'm a little, this is what this is and this is what this is so I just think it's important that we at every opportunity we try to explain to the general public what we do and what we don't do and what we control and what we can't control it's just like the Board of Public Works revenues although we we as a body here um, will vote on their budget we are kind of a pass through so i just i just like to have that explained at every opportunity that's all anytime any other questions 
Yeah. Did we vote on that? <laughs> yes, we do. I said, did we? No, we haven't yet. Okay. If there's no other questions, How many times have you been <laughs> if there's no other questions, I'd uh, ask for your vote, please. And that is passed 8-0. Next item on the agenda is a hearing to set the fiscal year 2016 final property tax request. That's proposed. Are you going to discuss it? At least that's what's on mine. Oh, you and the public hearing on the fiscal. Uh, okay. Um, the next thing up is the property tax request for FY 2016. Uh, you'll see that what we're asking for and what we discussed about in the past is a one cent levy increase uh, on the property tax for uh, next fiscal year, which sets the levy at 0 0.380223 for next year. Uh, we do not have the levy set for 2017. Uh, obviously, depending on how everything uh, may change between now and then, we'll come back to you next year and set that levy at that time. I'm ready. Mayor, I move that the public hearing be closed at 7.18 p.m. Second. I moved by Catlin, seconded by Kerr. The public hearing be closed at 7.18 p.m. Your vote, please. And that's approved 8-0. Next item is resolution number 5809, setting the property tax request for the city of Beatrice for fiscal year 2016. Mayor, I move that the resolution number 5809 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Cook. That resolution number 5809 be passed and adopted. Further discussion? This just does what we just talked about, setting that property tax levy for FY16 at 0 .380223. Stan? Yes, sir. Um, Toby, I don't know if you know this or not, but just just off the cuff, with our levy, towns of our size, where, where do we kind of rate? Is our levy lower or higher for towns of our? I, I've had a couple of people ask me that. Do you have any idea? I know I just hit you off the cuff cold, but yeah, I'm trying to think. I know Linda's had some of the information in the past. I don't know if she has it with her now <coughs> or not. Linda's always got stuff with her. We are just like about two cents over the average levy for municipalities of our size. And that's what when we talk about municipal equalization funds, where if we fall below the statewide average, then they will cut our funds 20% for every cent we fall below. But we're like two cents above it. Any other discussion? Anyone from the public? Your vote, please. And that is approved 8-0. Resolution number 5809 has been passed and adopted. Next item is resolution number 5810, calculating the amount of unused restricted funds <coughs> authority. Mayor, I move that resolution number 5810 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Billsbach, that resolution number 5810 be passed and adopted. Discussion. Uh, this resolution does what Linda described earlier, setting that un that restricted uh, funds at six hundred ninety-five thousand four hundred forty-five dollars and two cents. Questions? Anyone from the audience? Uh, your vote, please. That is approved eight zero. Resolution number fifty-eight ten has been passed and adopted. Next item is Resolution 5811, approving an agreement with the Beatrice Humane Society. Mayor, I move that Resolution number 5811 be passed and adopted. Second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Morgan. Resolution number 5811 be passed and adopted. Gentlemen, any discussion? Uh, once again, we're bringing before you <coughs> an agreement with the Beatrice Humane Society. It's essentially identical to our previous agreement. Uh, this also is a two-year agreement. Uh, once again, annual payments of $20,000 to be made quarterly. Uh, the only difference in this contract from the previous one is the Humane Society had some questions about when a dog is darted on behalf of the city. And so you'll see in here that if a dog is darted on behalf of the city and we don't know who the owner is, the city agrees to pay up to $150 to have that dart removed. 
Uh, I think last year it happened maybe three times. So it's not a an occurrence that it happens a lot, um, but they did ask for some additional funding in that event. Uh, other than that, the terms of this agreement are essentially identical to the last one. Only change may be if they do find their own or build their own quarters at Correct. some point in time, then the agreement will be modified. Dwight? Is removal of the needle, is that something a veterinarian has to do or? Yes. And go through vice grip and. No, you, you have to have a veterinarian come in and do it and. Okay. Note to self, be careful with the needle. Yeah, we'll get there before. Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion? Anyone from the audience? I think, yeah. I thought. All right, we have a motion on the floor to adopt uh, the uh, agreement with the Humane Society. Your vote, please. And that is approved. <coughs> uh, seven in favor, and Phil Smith <coughs> abstains. Resolution number 57, or 5811 has been passed and adopted. Next item is resolution number 5812, establishing varying fee or various fees. And I move that resolution number 5812 be passed and adopted. Second. Been moved by party. Catlin, seconded by party, that resolution number 5812 be passed and adopted. Discussion. Uh, a couple years ago, the city started putting all of the fees that we have into one document. And then what we tried to do was when we passed the budget, we pass the fee resolution if there's any changes in it. Uh, this year, you'll note in the memo that's on page 35, the only change in the fee resolution has to do with the water park. Back in January, we talked that with the increase in minimum wage, uh, they would incur some additional expenses. And what we have in the uh, fee resolution tonight is a 50 cent increase in the daily admission uh, for youth and adults and a $5 increase on youth season passes. Other than that, all the other fees in here are the same as they have been in uh, last year. Questions? I did get three calls on this from some older folks, and I, I, I just have to tell them, you know, gas goes up, food goes up, our costs go up, and we I hate to pass on any rate increases because I have to pay them too. But with the economies and stuff, it goes up. We have no choice. And um, I apologize to the older folks. I know they're on set, set uh, uh, economic balances, but uh, uh, we have no choice. It costs us. We've got to pass it on. So I guess my, that's my explanation to them. Okay. All right. I told them anyway. Ted? I have, I have two things. The... Resolu the part of the resolution that increases the fee at the water park, I'm opposed to that. I'd like to see it about the same. Uh, the water park's not a moneymaker. We lose money there every year. It's a good place to lose money. If you're going to lose money as, as an organization, you know, we, we're a service industry. So if you're going to lose someplace, it gives, because it gives just both kids and families some place to go, outside activities, you know, someplace they... On a so personal note, I'd like to see that left the same. I'm going to make a motion that it may fail. But the other question that I have is back on page 42, section 7, and I brought this up before. Uh, the number of false alarms for the, the uh, that we have. Mm -hmm. We don't charge anything for false alarms until they have six. That's uh, the fifth one you get charged on. Five. Number five. Okay. Okay. No, but we, until no. we have five. Get your bird. Yeah, they're trying to. Yeah. Forty-two. Yeah, and then we charge fifty dollars. Correct. Okay. Um. I, I just don't think that. That is incentivizing anyone enough to fix their alarm system. It's got to cost us more than fifty dollars to send somebody out to, a, a false alarm, especially a fire alarm or something like that. I mean, have we looked at this? When we when this was first passed by the, the council yeah. a number of years ago, uh, this was the numbers that we picked. We haven't changed them since then. Uh, yes, we spend more money than $50 by the time we get to the fifth one between the police or the fire responding and or uh, the administrative cost keeping track of it. Um, but Chief Lang, did you want to come up and talk on, on false alarms? I think what you'll hear, though, is false alarms have gone down. Yeah, well... Uh, 
said that before I walked all the way over. Hey, no problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, I, and I know, and I, we used to not charge anything. Correct. And I was involved in this when I have, this was my deal that we mm -hmm. had to charge something. Right. So I guess the thing, I guess that should have been, it should have been my question. One, is it working? Is the fee structure is what causes it? Or are people just annoyed by it? I mean, what, if, I'd like to see them less. Mm -hmm. So if we could move this up to the fourth or third and have them doubled, or, and do we ever collect these? Yes, we do. Yes, it's lowered it, and um, the number could probably be moved without changing that part. The, what that really does is prior to this ordinance being passed, um, you had chronic violators yeah. that had no incentive to fix their alarms and would get multiple alarms per day sometimes when they were malfunctioning over a period of time. Um, of a short period of time. And as you know, having been in law enforcement, that's a safety issue more than an ec economic issue for me because uh, we know that if you go to a number of false alarms and you cry wolf enough times, they don't pay so close of attention and that's how people get hurt. So we don't want that. Um, so I think it's definitely reduced it. Um, the problem's nothing like it was before. I think it's manageable where it's at. Um, if you want to make that number less, Fine, but I, it's it's actually working pretty well. So well, I guess I don't I don't want to try to change this this evening because no one here has had an opportunity to discuss that other than this. But I guess I, I would ask Bruce to you to look at this mm -hmm. and see where we're at, see where we came from, see where we're at, okay. and if we can tweak this and change it, we can do that later. Absolutely. But I, I think it's something that because I I'm probably showing my age a little bit, but I. This has got to be 10 or 15 years. <clears throat> yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking around 10. Um, you know, and the other thing that we did along those same lines is when we removed all the alarms from <coughs> the communication center. Right. And now that they're done privately, and they can detect um, what they call trouble alarms sometimes, um, like from lightning and thunder and those kind of things. Some of the alarms are sophisticated enough to tell the difference, and so we get less of those calls. So I think all in all, uh, that's much less of an issue than it was, whatever that was, I don't know off the top of my head either, 10 or 15 years ago, for sure. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm okay with that. If, What's that? If the false alarms have not been around that long. Our false alarm fees have only been around maybe five or six. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. But I do remember it discussing like it. Was, we had a couple of people. Right. We had a couple of crimes. Oh, I, was, I think it came from, I think it initiated through the fire department, mm -hmm. and we moved over to you. But right. Um, so I guess I don't mind leaving that as it is, but I would like to make a motion that we not increase the fee for the water park. On the floor. Okay. So you'll put a motion on the floor yeah. that we... And, and I thought I had. Leave I, the, I, I, the water park fees alone? Just sure. Did. Yeah, I just did. Okay. But we is need there a second? Second. Been moved by Fairbanks, seconded by Party, that we... Uh, not increase the fees for the water park discussion. Stan, do we know how much increase that would be if we actually moved it from 50 cents up and five dollars up? Does it really matter to Hill of Beans or is it? I think when we looked at it in January, and I've got to remember off the top of my head, I think we were talking about somewhere in the ballpark of about five thousand dollars. I think it was about five thousand yeah, dollars. Now, of course, the media is going to quote me on that number, and I'm trying it, to remember. It off was the four, memo that it I wrote. was four to five thousand was the guesstimate back then, yeah. and which is not which is a substantial amount of money, but like I said, we lose money every year on this, and if you're going to lose some somewhere, I'd rather lose it on youth and outdoor activities. So, um, I might have you come up uh, and explain whether or not. Um, are we going to be doing some things with the park, with the water park, some enhancements, some new equipment that um, may cost us some, some money, Mark? Well, we looked at budgeting 20000 next year for capital improvement for an item. Um, and we're doing, we ordered some splash pads and we're redoing the frog right now. The, basically, the increase was to cover the minimum wage increase because we're going to $9 an hour next year. So yeah. that was the big, yeah. why, we, why we did the rates changes back in January. 
How many employees that are, do we have down there that are part-time employees that we're going to have to pay the nine dollars an hour? Well, you'll pay everybody nine dollars. Yeah, I know, but how many? Oh, how there's many usually do we have five or forty down there? How many? Thirty-five or forty, because some of them only work 10, 12 hours a week. So. Any other discussion? Bob. You know, I can I can certainly appreciate where Ted's coming from. One of the concerns that I kind of run into, though, is I also don't want to get caught to the point where we're behind and then have to raise a dollar, dollar and a half, ten dollars on the, the youth pass. I think it's a little easier to take that small hit than a larger hit a year, two years down the road. Okay. The, the problem we found out was that if the kids, if the wife's paying nine dollars an hour, the kids are going to go work there instead of working down at the yeah, water park. Keep up that. that was going to be my next That's, question. Do we, you? we ran into that a few years ago when we weren't paying minimum wage. We were only paying six fifty an hour, and minimum wage was seven twenty five. So we bumped everybody to seven twenty five just to cover our costs because kids could get different jobs. So just a point of clarification: <clears throat> the city of Beatrice, pursuant to state law, is not required to pay the state minimum wage, but we are required to pay the federal level. So. The new change that took effect with the uh, passage of the voters uh, doesn't specifically require us to pay the new minimum wage, but obviously we will be competing with a private entity that will be required to pay that. So, working for you isn't a big enough draw, Mark. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> Dwight. So I realize too, this is not a money maker. No. But if we have a twenty thousand dollar issue pump next year, we're going to have to go into the capital <coughs> funds for that probably too. Then, right? What is your department? Deep enough to go twenty thousand next year, or is that going to come from general funds? And it'll, it'll project? come from general funds. Come from general funds. So I don't see what the difference is if we can't dip just a little bit more out with that and give them one more year cheaper. Okay. Anything else? Got a motion on the floor. Any any comments from the public? All right. I'd ask for your vote, please, then on the uh, motion from uh, by Fairbanks and seconded by Party. And that fails. Uh, five to three. With, you've got Billsbach, Party, Bills, and, Bach, Party and Fairbanks Thanks. voting in favor. Thanks, guys. Okay, we still have a motion on the floor to pass resolution number 5812. Any further discussion? And your vote on that. And that is approved. Oh, I thought I moved it enough. That is approved 8-0. <laughs> Resolution number 5812 has been passed and adopted. Next item is ordinance revising the water rate charges for water purchased from the city of Beatrice, Nebraska, as recommended by the Board of Public Works. Here I move that said ordinance be given number 15-014. The title therefore be approved. The rules be suspended and said ordinance be read by number only Three times tonight. Second. And moved by Catlin, seconded by Party. That ordinance number 15-014, the title thereof, uh, thereof be approved and rules be suspended and ordinance be read by title, by number only, beg your pardon, three times tonight. And that is approved 8-0. Ordinance number 15-014 by number the first time. Ordinance number zero, uh, ordinance number 15-014 by number the second time. And ordinance number 15-014 the third and final time. Mayor, I move that ordinance number 15-014 be passed and approved. By Catlin, seconded by Billsbach, that ordinance number 15-014 be passed and approved. Discussion. Uh, as we've talked about with the uh, different rates that are out there and with the water department budget, uh, what, we ha what you have before you tonight is a proposed uh, rate increase for the water department. Uh, it would both be an increase to the usage rate and to the monthly service charge, and the overall impact to the average registered customer would be $1.40 monthly. Ted? A um, couple of things. I looked through the capital budget here and I didn't see anything specific and I probably missed it. But what, what is it in the water department that you're, I don't have necessarily a problem with changing the base rate. I have a little problem with you changing 
in that you're increasing the, the user fee, the user fee. I didn't see anything in the capital budget that, that they necessarily need the money for other than they're trying to build up the reserves. So if, if there is something that I missed, I'd like that explained. The other thing, the other question that I have as we go along a little further in here, have, did we actually look at maybe raising, and I, you hate to be burdening your neighbors, but did we look at raising the rates and the water that we sell to the, to every place else that to offset this and so we didn't have to raise the rates on our users? Yes, uh, answer to the second part of your question is, yes, we did also increase rates, this uh, increase the rates to Coke and Agrium. Uh -huh. uh, also, uh, the other ones that you think about, Philly and those who also buy water from us, they're, they get charged our normal usage rate. So if you raise yours, we raise theirs as well. Yeah, my question is, is that you know, the other communities, is there an opportunity to raise that? Is it, are they a significant enough user that you could raise their fees to offset our cost? No. No? They're not a significant user, no. Okay. Then, the, then it's kind of a moot point. Uh, when you look at what this uh, proposed rate increase would generate, uh, it would increase their operating cash for the water department over their expenditures this year by $4,000. So it's not designed to build their cash reserves. Uh, when you look through their capital budget, the big one this year is their AMI program. Uh, the AMI program and the replacement of water mains are the two largest expenditures on Steve's budget uh, for capital expenditures. And this rate increase will help uh, fund those items. Any other questions, gentlemen? All right, seeing none, your vote please. That is approved 8-0. Ordinance number 15-014 has been passed and approved. Next item is ordinance, an ordinance regu regulating the fees and charges for the use of the wastewater treatment system of the city of Beatrice, Nebraska, as recommended <coughs> by the Board of Public Works. Mayor, I move that said ordinance be given number 15-015. The title, therefore, be approved, the rules be suspended, and the said ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Party. That ordinance be given number 15-015, the title thereof be approved, the rules suspended, and said ordinance be read by number only three times tonight. There is no discussion if the rules are suspended. Your vote, please. That is approved, 8-0. Ordinance number 15-015, by number only the first time. Ordinance number 15-015, by number the second time, and ordinance number 15-015 <coughs> by number the third and final time. Mayor, I move that ordinance number 15-015 be passed and approved. Second. second. Moved by Catlin, seconded by Billsbach, that ordinance number 15-015 be passed and approved. Discussion. Uh, once again, as we've talked about the rate increase uh, for the WPC department, what this proposed rate increase has in it is an increase in the usage fee, a $1 per month increase in the monthly service charge, and an increase in the infrastructure fee of $2 per month for both residential and commercial. Uh, overall, it ends up averaging out to be a $3.88 increase for the residential customer per month. Stan. Rich? Um, this was the one that most of them asked me about. And hopefully I told them right. This, this big increase is because of the sewer treatment plant that we're going to have to. So a portion of this money is going into a, like an escrow account to help us offset the cost of this plant that has to be done by 2021, I believe it is. And some equipment's already been and purchased, right, ordered and purchased. Right. But uh, if we don't do this, the feds are going to come down on us. So. The, the major portion of this increase is to offset our costs years down the line on this, uh, is this sewage treatment plant overall, and we have to do it. That is correct. So with I mean, the feds tell us, you know, the feds tell us you got to do it, but they don't tell us how to fund it, and they don't give us the money to fund it. So that's, uh, that's why it's so large, and we apologize, but it has to be done. Correct. Again, with this proposed rate increase, the operating cash, if you will, for the uh, wastewater treatment facility uh, and the WPC will increase less than $1,500 next year. The rest of the money that's generated by this rate increase will be used for those future plant improvements that need to be made by roughly 2021-2022. So I told him right? You did. Good job. 
Any other discussion? All right, gentlemen, your vote, please. That is approved 8-0. Ordinance number 15-015 has been passed and adopted. Next item on the agenda is the uh, public forum. The purpose of the public forum is for the presentation of an item by the general public to the city council for consideration at a later date. No discussion or action will be taken by the city council at this time. Any city councilmen have anything for the public forum first? What about the general public? Okay. Discussions, reports, don't have any. It looks like our next regular scheduled meeting is going to be on <coughs> September 21st in these chambers at 7 o'clock. And we are planning a special meeting on September 28th, also in this same room, uh, to talk about uh, approval of uh, fiscal year 15 claims. That's the normal night. We have a work session. Uh, because it's close to the end of the fiscal year, we're going to have it as a special meeting so we can pay the last set of claims before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Mr. Catlin? Mayor, I move that the meeting be adjourned at 7.44 p.m. Second. Been moved by Catlin, seconded by Claybaugh, that the meeting be adjourned at 7.44 p.m. Your vote, please. Thank you, gentlemen.